Hello and welcome to the live recording of Catholic Weekend episode 303. We're using Blab this morning, so if you're watching us on the video, hey, a little bit different. It's almost like the Brady Bunch here. Um, I don't know if we're in the same <laughs> positions, but to my uh, right. Uh, Other way, Jeff. Well, yeah, see, it's, it's in a different order on your screen. <laughs> One of these ways, he's he's either up here or down over here, or whatever. That's Father Corey. And then there's the love. Oh, your light looks great, Maria. Thank you. The lighting is uh, awesome. Hello, Maria Johnson. A little better. Yeah. And uh, Steve, as always, looks great. So thanks. I think we're ready natural, to go. natural sunlight coming through natural the window. Light. So. Okay. All right. Here we go. This is SQPN, the StarQuest Production Network, leading the way. You're listening to Catholic Weekend, episode number 303 for the week ending Saturday. February 20th, 2016. I forgot the month. <laughs> Hello, good morning, and welcome to this week's episode of Catholic Weekend. I'm Captain Jeff. I'm your captain. I'm your captain. I'm your captain. And I'm feeling kind of queasy. So I'm feeling... And also joining us this morning, the lovely Maria Johnson from Conyers, Georgia. Hi, everybody. It's so cool to be here on this blabby, blabbity, blab, blab. <laughs> it's a blab. It's <laughs> and also joining us from the plains of Oklahoma, we have Steve Nelson. Hello, everybody from balmy Tulsa, Oklahoma. Show sure smells sweet. Oh, right the We're and having also joining. Spring. Are you? Okay, you'll have to tell us about that in a second. But meanwhile, I'm going to introduce Father Corey Stika from Montana. Well, howdy, y'all. It feels kind of like spring here, too. Really? All right. There we go. So there's our introduction with our kind of cute introduction music. <laughs> and... Uh, so you say, uh, Steve, that it's uh, springy there, huh? What what kind of temperatures are you? Oh gosh, it's going to be close to eighty degrees. And February of all, oh, this is uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, I think we're going to get up to in the mid sixties here today in the Atlanta area, right, uh, Maria? Yeah, it's gorgeous. We my daffodils up. are up, and my tulips are starting to come up. Can you believe that? I know, I know. The trees are budding here, and we've got it's our uh, grass fire season. We had. Oh, we had 50 mile an hour winds two days ago, and it just set off fires all over the place. But way too early for this. Wow. And then, Father Corey, so uh, what kind of temperatures are you experiencing over there in Montana? Well, like I said, kind of springy, but Montana springs. So um, we got 40s, and there's not much snow left on the ground. So that's, at, for February, that's pretty rare hmm. that it's this warm. Like I said, that feels kind of like spring for us. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Well, how is everybody doing? Maria, how's your week been? Oh, my week has been fantastic. You've been getting a lot of sleep. I've been, not last night, but yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I went to bed at three last night. <clears throat> talking, why is that? talking wedding, talking wedding preps. Oh, oh my God. When, I was getting when married. Is the wedding? It's in the, <clears throat> excuse me, it's in the fall. Ooh. And, uh, and we were just chatting and chatting and chatting, and the men left us alone, and we were chatting some more. <laughs> and I looked at the <laughs> clock, and it was 3 a.m. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad that you uh, were able to get up and, and join us this morning. Um, how, how is everything going? You're officially retired from your teaching job now, aren't you? Well, yeah, I submitted my, my formal resignation through HR on Monday, which was pretty exciting. And uh, so my, my duties are kind of, you know, reduced a little bit, uh, but I'm certainly committed to finishing the semester for the students. So mm -hmm. I'm still teaching, yeah, through, through the end of May, oh, through the okay. end of April. So you're not really experiencing the, uh, the joy of not going to work every morning then? No, but I'm experiencing the joy of just teaching. 
<laughs> no, no administrative stuff. No. Yeah. I like teaching. Uh, it's probably like all the other stuff that <laughs> makes the job teaching, a hassle. Teaching is nothing more than performance art. It's the other stuff that uh, that gets <laughs> ugly. That's true. Have you entered that weird zone where people are talking about the future and you're not quite involved in it? <gasps> That's exactly what's happening. So I, you know, I'm not a decision maker anymore. I'm a lame duck. That's I'm, it, I'm a program strange. director. Yeah, I'm a program director. And so I don't want to make decisions that I'm not going to implement. So I keep, you know, deferring to the staff who just looks at me and said, we don't know what to do. So. <laughs> well, you're going to have to figure it out in the next few months because you're going to have to do it next year. <laughs> I've got two staff members that work on two-year contracts and their contracts are going to end at the 1st of June. And they're in the same boat. And they're young guys. They're like 25. And they're just like, we don't know what's going on. We don't know what to do. Do you want our opinion or not? <laughs> Sooner or later, oh, you have to I'm never, things in yourself. I never withhold an opinion if somebody asks me one for what. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Not for that. <laughs> in fact, I was in a staff meeting not too long ago. And uh, at, at the end of the meeting, uh, like a VP, a very high up admin person said, no, no more questions. No one has any comments. And there was silence. <laughs> and she literally looked down the conference table toward me. Not even you. <laughs> <laughs> Not even you. Wow, that's kind of embarrassing in a in a in a <laughs> little way. Oh man. Hey, the Pope has been in the news quite a lot lately. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Going after those Catholic politicians, or not so Catholic uh, politicians, not so Christian. Uh, oh, and what? Father, and Father James Martin has actually come up with an entire process for discerning what he says. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so are you referring to perhaps this? Let's listen. The Pope is being told that Donald Trump is not a nice person, okay? Donald Trump is a very nice person, and I'm a very, I, I am a very nice person. And I'm a very good Christian. Because the Pope said something to the effect that maybe Donald Trump isn't Christian, okay? And he's questioning my faith. I was very surprised to see it, but I am a Christian. And I'm proud of it. Okay. For a religious leader to question a person's faith is disgraceful. I'm proud to be a Christian. And as president, I will not allow Christianity to be consistently attacked and weakened, unlike what is happening now with our current president. Okay? Believe me. No leader, very important, and this has just been given out to the press two seconds ago. No leader, especially a religious leader, should have the right to question another man's religion or faith. Especially when they feed all sorts of false information into them. They're using the Pope as a pawn, and they should be ashamed of themselves. That's the Mexican government. They should be ashamed of themselves for doing so, especially when so many lives are involved and when illegal immigration Why are you still is so playing this? And so yeah. dangerous and it's so almost bad over. for the United States. Okay? Period. That's it. Period. There you go. Thank you for uh, waiting till the end. <laughs> Why? Well, hey, um, you ever heard of this guy? Howdy, folks. This is Jimmy Aiken from Jimmy Aiken Podcast, and you're listening to Catholic Weekend with Captain Jeff and the gang. He did a great um, uh, breakdown of not only that particular um, little spat that uh, Trump and the, the Pope are having, um, but also some of the other. No, not button. the Pope. Not 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 the Pope and Trump are having. Trump is having. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Okay. So uh, Pope Francis speaks on hot button issues. Nine things to know and share. And this is an article that we'll put in the show notes from mm -hmm. JimmyAiken.com. He does a very nice job of kind of parsing uh, a lot of different things that were discussed on his um, impromptu press conference aboard the uh, uh, the airplane that he was uh, flying on uh, back to Rome from Mexico. And uh, they talked about several different things. They talked about uh, civil unions, uh, pedophilia, uh, the issue we just uh, uh, played a little sound bite of uh, with Donald Trump, the... Um, uh, let's see, civil unions for homosexuals. I think I already said that one. Uh, abortion and contraception, you know, the Zika virus, et cetera. So there are several uh, really hot topics that, uh, you know, the press loves to pick up on and then kind of, you know, eh, not really quite represented exactly the way it should be 
because a lot of times they don't understand uh, the language of religion and the, re the language of the Catholic Church. So um, anyway, so I'll, I'll step back and uh, let you guys have fun with this. <laughs> like he says one thing he repeats it that just drives me up the wall and it's the oh if you're you know a religious leader should not question someone's religious faith dear mr trump that is the job of a religious leader we are to help you grow in your christian faith and part of that is questioning where you are at now if we don't understand where you are at now we can't help you grow so, yes, the Pope has every right and it's his responsibility to question where people's religious faith is currently at so you can grow from that. I hear that all the time as a priest. I get that one. You don't have a right to question my faith. Well, actually, I do. Because I want you to think about it. Mm. <laughs> well, and, you know, if you really go, and again, this is a really good article to read from Jimmy Aiken and, and see the way he parsed it. And the Pope was very careful about the words he used. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he did not directly say that uh, Trump was not a Christian. He said that Correct. if a person who thinks only about building walls wherever they may be and not building bridges is not a Christian, this is not the gospel. Or not, well, not in the gospel. But then, and, you know, somebody pointed out, well, you know, you look at the Vatican and it's surrounded by a very large wall. <laughs> so after being invaded by Muslims trying to wipe out everyone in the Vatican. Yes. Well, I mean, some people would argue that there are. Well, we know whose passion is up today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, again, I, th I think that uh, it's really easy to come to a conclusion immediately because. Uh, you know, of the way you may feel about uh, certain people, but uh, you, it's just, it, I, I think it's a, it's a good article to read and see that mm -hmm. how it was all parsed out. And uh, well, it's interesting. It, if you're, you know, it gives us something Trump to talk. Was, <laughs> Trump wasn't the only one who wanted, who wants to build the wall. He's not the only candidate who's out there calling for that. Right. So he's, I think he's taking it personally, but, or using it for more press is more. Well, that, yeah. that was my take on I the think that was that it was, you know, he said, uh, using somebody as a pawn, and I think it, the politicians were doing exactly the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, I think it's just a bunch of nothing. You know, it's yeah, just it's, uh, it's, it's just an opportunity to get press. I mean, if it's yeah. trending, you know, if you watch if you watch some of the politicians, um, especially the ones that are like in, in at at the head of the race in their respective parties, whatever's trending is what they're talking about too. Whether or not it's relevant to them. I mean, I can't imagine that the Pope would be relevant to anything that Trump has to say other than the fact that it's press because, you know. Yeah. Anyway, so I thought that was a, it was an interesting thing to talk about, especially for a show called Catholic Weekend. Um, yeah. The other thing I thought well, was interesting. It, yes, sir. Well, I was going to say, I thought it was pretty poignant when he was at the border uh, you know, looking into the United States and just, just the image of that and, and the issues that surround that. It's, it's all it's such a complex issue, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but still, uh, I just found it really poignant to have him standing there, you know, looking across the border like so many of the immigrants do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and then it was also kind of poignant. Well, not maybe poignant, but um, interesting the um, reaction that the Pope had at one of the events where people were trying to gain access to the pontiff and somebody wow. got a little bit over exuberant and started yeah. pulling him and he almost tumbled on top of or i think he did tumble on top of hmm. somebody in a wheelchair and um, what, what's interesting about this is that the pope kind of expressed a little frustration and uh, he wasn't very <laughs> happy about what had happened to him and he kind of scolded the guy and said you know quit being so selfish and yeah. the thing that was interesting about it to me wasn't what happened in his reaction, which I thought was just a normal human reaction, is the fact that the media is like, whoa, this guy's really a human being. Well, duh. <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. So what did you think about that? I thought it was funny. I, I thought it was in, entertaining to look at the different translations. I had such mm -hmm. a neat experience with this Pope because I can understand him in his native language. So I was watching all of the coverage on uh, one of the Spanish language television stations mm -hmm. so that I could just listen to him without the, the, the translator going. And, uh, and it was just so lovely. 
It was just so lovely. So when I saw that, I, I was like, wow, there are so many different ways that this can be translated, what he said. I've always um, thought that that a lot of the nuance of yeah. what he's trying, the meaning he's trying to project gets lost because it's translated. Yeah. And yeah. I, there, what, I mean, there's. I, I know when, you know, when I uh, was in Papua New Guinea and I was teaching, there were so many nuances I'd want to insert into the language that I couldn't because I knew that my students who were speaking English as a third language wouldn't get it. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't get the nuance. Yeah. And, you know, and I, and I, so I sometimes think whenever there's a translation, it's like, and that, you know, people are like, the Pope said this, the Pope said this. And I was like, go back and let's have somebody who actually understands the language and the nuance of it. Tell us what mm -hmm. he really meant. <laughs> yeah. And not take yeah, one I mean sentence out of context. Exactly. I mean, if you if you don't see the humanity in his face, where he was he was irritated, and um, I loved seeing that because yeah, you know, again, that just points out that he's a bishop. He's a bishop of Rome, and in the Catholic Church, the bishop of Rome is also the Pope, and uh, it's. It, but he's a human being just like all of us. I mean, mm -hmm. he's, he's not a god, and obviously, he has um, you know human emotions as we all do. And, Who's uh, not going to be a little uh, frightened or frustrated when somebody grabs you and pulls you and in pulls a direction you, you don't want to go? <laughs> yeah, right. right. I think so, I might have you know, lashed out physically. You know, I, I, I think <laughs> yeah, I, I think I might have used some other words. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Maria, it's really interesting what you say about how things are translated because you know I only speak one language and not very well um, English, and um, so when you are trying to translate something into a different language, I think that uh, it's got to go through a bunch of different lenses and filters, your own personal biases and belief system and everything else when you make the translation, right? Yeah, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot. It's really interesting that I can, I can translate from Spanish to English. In fact, I was certified years ago. I let that expire because I wasn't doing much with it. But I can, I can capture the nuance in Spanish and deliver the nuance in English. But I cannot deliver the nuance from English into Spanish. Hmm. Um, so, so I can I I can do the translation in one direction. I can go from Spanish to English, but I'm much weaker from English to Spanish. So I wouldn't I wouldn't attempt it because it is because so much of the richness of what you're communicating is in is in understanding those different levels of, of nuance, you know, for a, for, for a beginning person who's just understanding something, you want the basic, you want the basic teaching, if you will. But it, the, the teachings of the church are so rich and so multi-layered. And, and as your faith increases, they, they, you know, they, they bring on new meaning that I would totally fail at, at that delivery in Spanish from English. So not only do you have that, that uh, English, to Spanish kind of translation, but you also have the problem with the language of religion because mm -hmm. our Protestants, Protestant brothers and sisters, or even people of not of any kind of faith, don't always quite understand exactly what we're saying when we're using common words that everybody mm -hmm. uses exactly. that uh, may not have the same meaning. And so that's another layer that we kind of cut through that uh, sometimes it just doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about it so many times on this show where I, I find myself in a, in a public space in a meeting and I'll just I'll just use a word in a very particular way and look around to see who responds to it. In <laughs> 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 like I was I was uh, I was at a conference one time and uh, I was in actually in a room full of people where I was trying to defend a position uh, for a direction we were taking and. I was uh, an advocate for students and, and I said something, you know, about too many, too many test scores and too many data points. And we need to consider the dignity of the human person. And about three people went <laughs> <laughs> just kind of, just kind of looked at me like, Oh, <laughs> have you ever done, have you ever used the argument? Well, it's not either or it's both. And, Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was one, uh, by I the way, I teach rhetoric. No, there cannot ever be both and. <laughs> well, that's, that's funny. You should, I, I was at a, a, a gelato shop the other day and there was a men's group. Looks like they were doing a Bible study or something. It was in the corner. 
And so our, I sort of sidled over to them because I wanted to eavesdrop a little bit and figure out if they, you know, what sort of church they belong to. So I was like listening for Catholic code words, you know, <laughs> I was trying to figure out, you know, I was like, well, so far they haven't said anything that tips them off yet. So <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. So yeah, for, uh, for, for those of you just watching for the first time, um, I'm a convert to Catholicism and there were just so many things that I thought I understood in, uh, in, in, relation to my own upbringing in the Lutheran church. And so when one of my Catholic friends would say something and use that same word, it was just like, mm -hmm. it didn't make any sense to me. It was like, I didn't understand it. And then, try, you know, not trying to understand it and then just kind of getting defensive uh, because it was, um, you know, offending me, uh, the way the the words were used, et cetera. I mean, I have several different mm -hmm. examples, but I don't want to spend the whole show doing that. But um, so, it's incumbent upon us as Catholic Christians to make sure that when we're using language that might be um, a little bit hard to understand, or you know that that's going to be a, a different uh, nuance to that word or phrase, then it's up to us to make sure that we are expressing ourselves well and may, and explaining ourselves mm -hmm. so that people don't you know take it the wrong way. Well, I think when you're talking about like between different religions uh, or different uh, denominations, that's that is one thing that the ecumenical movement has done a good job of, is helping kind of explain to other churches and learn from those other denominations what they mean. Mm -hmm. You know, what do we mean when we talk about justification? What do we mean when we talk about salvation? What do these words mean? Because how we use them and how other groups do are two sometimes two very different things. And again, yeah, like like Maria said, then you throw language you know, cross language issues in the midst of that. And yeah, things get ugly really quick. Yeah. And anytime you're going to talk about an issue like uh, the other issues that he uh, discussed in his impromptu conference aboard uh, the shepherd one, I don't think they use that. Terminology, oh, please, before, but... before you talk, before you say that, did you see the meme leading into that? No. It said, uh, brace yourself. The the Pope is on a plane with your <laughs> that's, that's what I was going to say. Is because we we always go, oh, no. Oh, oh no. Here boy. We go. Well, but don't, don't you know, according to Eye of the Tiber, it is now infallible whatever he says up there from his, oh, from his seat because... at A3, A3, you know, in the first class. <laughs> now the chair of Peter. Speaking from the chair of Peter right now. Okay, gotcha. I get a lot of the those, airline seat of Peter, I guess. <laughs> I get a lot of those eye of the Tiber things in my Facebook feed, and it's like, gosh, I hope people realize that this is satire. <laughs> That's half the fun when people comment, "Oh, this isn't funny." And it's like, no, it no, actually is quite it's funny. Actually, it's, it's satire. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, somebody asked the Pope about um, contraception um, because we have this little thing called the Zika virus spread by mosquitoes and um and it's spreading r quite rapidly and it's a uh and what, what what are the uh what is the world health organization calling it now um uh, some kind of epidemic. a yeah a global epidemic it's serious and you know mm -hmm. somebody rightly asked so what what do you feel or what do you think about you know the use of contraception to uh help with uh, combat this and uh, again he said something and he didn't say that he was like, this is my final judgment. This is what I believe about it. He, he kind of expressed that he was, you know, thinking about it and, and many people were thinking about it and talked about the difference between abortion and contraception and how one is a, is a, uh, is, is a horrible evil and the other isn't. So not that he didn't say, he did not say that it was not a <laughs> sin, but, uh, the, um, the, what did it say? The traditional Catholic, um, philosophy of the lesser of two evils. Now, I'm a new Catholic, well, 15 years, but I still feel like I'm a new Catholic, uh, to the rest of these cradle Catholics here on the panel. Who are practicing. Practicing Catholic. Catholics. Mm -hmm. is, is that really practicing. Is that really a, um, a, 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 a philosophy that the lesser of two evils? Um, I kind of scratched my head on that one. I think it is. I mean, I, that's how I've, I've viewed it. I could be wrong for, you know, 50 years, but. Well, it's, it's, it's definitely a moral. It's a moral choice. Problem. Mm -hmm. You know, the, to, to consider the lesser of two evils is still considering an evil, mm -hmm. you know, but um, 
it's a moral corundum is what it is. You know, it's, it's how do you, how do you handle these situations? Um, you know, with understanding, always trying to find the good. Right. And sometimes it, and, and you can never choose evil to do good. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's a moral right. precept. So maybe that's what I'm being confused with. Uh, the, uh, the, the means justifying the, the ends justifying the means and uh, the lesser of two evils. Those are not the same thing. No. Okay. I mean, in my mind, I guess if it, it comes down that there's only two choices you can make, mm-hmm. choose the lesser of the evil. Yes. But is it ever really a situation where there's just two choices? That's, no. that's what I always come down to. Not usually. Yeah. Um, Pope Francis slammed the idea that abortion could be justified, stating abortion is not the lesser of two evils. It's a crime. It mm-hmm. is to throw someone mm-hmm. out in order to save another. That's what the mafia does. It's a crime, mm-hmm. an absolute evil. Abortion is not a theological problem. It's a human problem. It's a medical problem. You kill one person to save another in the best case scenario or to live comfortably. No, it's against the Hippocratic oaths doctors must take. It is an evil in and of itself, but it is not a religious evil in the beginning. No, it's a human evil. Then obviously, Mm -hmm. as with every human evil, each killing is condemned. Mm -hmm. So that's what he had to say. The press doesn't doesn't promote that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, he's also urging that uh, doctors do their utmost to find vaccines against these um, mosquitoes that carry the disease. And, you know, and, and one thing I, I've been seeing, too, is there's the question of whether or not this virus is actually causing the problems they're seeing. Mm-hmm. That's you true. Know, because, oh, did you because, see the thing in Brazil about it? Yeah, being, that's, uh, that's what I'm talking about, about where there was, it was the same place where a, uh, a chemical... Um, it's a larvicide. It, like, pesticide, a larvicide, thank yeah. you, oh. was spread... And it's actually thought that this chemical may be causing the problems, not the virus. Right. Interesting. Right. So we may, and I think that they were pretty clear uh, from the very beginning saying that they're, they're making assumptions uh, mm-hmm. that, that this is what is causing the, um, uh, the birth defects, but they weren't absolutely sure. But Hey, let's, but you know, the, the, the sad part is groups immediately jumped on that and said, well, that, that means you need to use contraceptions. You need to have abortion readily available because of course, you know, there's a slim chance that something could happen. Yep. How come hmm. they never say chastity? <laughs> well, that's that's unreasonable. People can't do that. People can't take a vow of, of celibacy and spend their life not having sex. Oh, just, that's yeah. a silly assumption, <laughs> Steve. Or, yeah, what's wrong with you? Or chastity of marriage that it's proper. It's 2016. That, that doing on, something that's healthy. There's a word right there. That's a great example, Maria. Chastity is one of those words where people think, oh, that means that uh, somebody isn't going to have sex. Yeah, and exactly. no, that is no. not the strict definition of chastity because as no. you just expressed, we married people have to um, act in, in chastity as well. And that doesn't mean that we don't have sex because obviously that's not the case because both Maria and I have three children. <laughs> and, um, so obviously there was something going on there. So, But chastity is yeah, the right. way that you behave in whatever your vocation of life is. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's right. for a married Absolutely. person, that means, you know, being chaste for me is to only, you know, express myself in that way with my wife, my, my, my right. spouse, and not have a, affairs and, and look at uh, other women in a leery way or whatever the proper word is, you know. And so, even within the, the and, sacrament and of proper self-control mm-hmm. and, and other things. Right. But, you know. Um, I apologize. I used the wrong word. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, that, no. You I'm used the correct no, word. But, and I, w- I was being sarcastic. Yeah. I was being sarcastic, you know, about how people can't control themselves. Yeah. You know, they wouldn't do something silly like a, a vow of celibacy. Right. That would be crazy. It never happens. It doesn't happen in our world today. <laughs> if you're just listening to the audio and you don't know what that voice is, that's uh, a priest, Father Corey Stika, who uh, practices. Who has taken the promise of celibacy. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but, so. you know, that's just, I, I just think that the culture, the, 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 the mainstream culture, if you will, which is why to, to be practicing any faith really is countercultural in, in so many ways. Right. Um, that the mainstream culture would, uh, the default is always to this relativistic worldview. And so it seems like the conversation always does turn to sex because, you know, of course you have to contracept if you're, if you're 
if you're engaging in multiple partners over time, you mm -hmm. know, so that becomes it. And of course you're going to get sick if that's the behavior that you're, that you're, you know, um, involved in. And so then it does make sense that that's what you want to do to, to protect your health, but you're not, you're ruining your health and you're ruining your emotional health for sure. And you're certainly breaking your spiritual health mm -hmm. when, when you're, you know, pursuing that kind of lifestyle, but that's the default that the media always takes. Mm -hmm. You know, so any comment that we make has to go to, well, then the solution must be contraception because there's always looking at that angle to rationalize contraception and a contraceptive culture. And I understand that frame of reference because I came from a world where, um, you know, post-1932 um, major Protestant Christianity kind of finally you know, decided that it was okay. But before 1932, mm -hmm. every Christian denomination, mm -hmm. doesn't matter what it was, uh, you know, were staunchly against contra, uh, contra, artificial contraception. And, um, and so I grew up in this world where, I mean, it was just normal. I mean, that's what people did. We use contraception. We'll, we'll stop using contraception when it's time, the right time to have children or if it's convenient or, you know, if we can afford it and that kind of thing. And, um, and that, that was a normal thing to me. It made sense. I understood that and wasn't until I opened this book called the catechism of the Catholic church. Uh, when we were starting to look into, uh, the Catholic faith and I started reading the arguments against it. And then I actually started reading some of the Protestant reformers like Martin Luther and Calvin and mm -hmm. wow, talking about some strong language. If you want to see, you know how they felt about contraception. You should read some of their stuff. Ooh. And uh, Martin Luther was not known for holding back in his no. uh, in his opinions. Yeah. So it um, it really opened my eyes. I finally saw an art an, an argument presented to myself that I had never heard before, and I went, "Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I understand now. I get that, and I believe that." And uh, mm -hmm. so that was one of those things that you know the light bulb went off in my head. I went, "Oh, okay. I get it now." I still, I still had a long time. Uh, it, it was a long time for me to understand the both and thing <laughs> because <laughs> it, there was no, there was no context at all. Somebody would say something about both and, and I go, huh? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Both and, and then, you know, somebody uh, finally explained that, you know, instead of either or it's both and because, you know, you can make arguments, rational yeah. arguments <laughs> that, uh, that, that, in, that encompass multiple viewpoints. Sure. Sure. Well, one of the things I like about our faith, and especially as I've gotten older and and gone a little deeper in, in the study of the faith, is that how rich the catechism is in explaining all of these things, mm -hmm. because it, it really does give you a good, good explanation for, you know, for some of these things that 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 some of us as as cradle Catholics have done by rote without really uh, having a deep understanding of. Right. So it's, it's always it's always good, you know. You, you have your faith maybe that's here in your heart, but it's got to it's got to connect with the intellect. There has to be a bridge between the two, mm -hmm. to uh, to really grasp it. Because you know it's the, it's the complexity of the human condition mm -hmm. that, I, that the catechism explains. It really is. And may I take a moment to read one of the uh, comments in in our chat room? Uh, I I think it's a great comment. Uh, Salah Asanusi. I'm not sure. I'm sure I'm butchering your name. Uh, sorry about that. He said he wanted to take a moment to congratulate you guys for this blab. You teach people instead of telling them how to live their how to live their lives. And we need more people like you who give knowledge. I'm a Muslim and I love learning about other religions. And I'm glad that I stumbled upon this blab. Sorry for yeah. interrupting. And you're not interrupting at all. I mean, that's that's, that's great. Good. And, yeah. and that's and that's an important reminder for all of us is that, yeah. you know, don't, don't start pounding on people and saying, you know, you're not, you're not living your, you're not a Christian. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or don't tell me I'm not a Christian, you know, this, like uh, live your life the way that, uh, you know, Jesus told us to live our lives and, uh, you know, and, and be a good example for others. There's mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of a phrase that should be more well known in the Catholic faith is what the church teaches is proposed not imposed. Hmm. We propose what we should do. We propose how you should live, not impose. You know, we've tried that. We've tried to force people to be Catholic. Look at the history of places like Mexico. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Hmm. Most of the time, 
it doesn't. Once the imposition is done, they fall away. Mm-hmm. Unless it's proposed to them and they accept it. And that's what we are called to do. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not going to, we're not, you know, it was, it's funny where in the 1800s, they thought that the Pope was going to set up a Catholic triangle in the middle of the United States, Cincinnati, Cincinnati Milwaukee, and St. Louis were going to be the points of that triangle. And St. Louis was going to be the new Vatican. Oh, is really? that where Pope Michael is now? <laughs> oh, he's over in Kansas, oh. further, <laughs> further west. But it was, wow. it was, there was a legitimate. It was a fear among many Protestants that this was going to happen, and that the Vatican was going to move to the United States and take over the country and make every force everyone to be Catholic. Wow. And of course, all the Catholics are going. But you're joking, right? <laughs> hey, nobody got and time the, for that. Yeah, what? and the reason why they said that is because that part of the country. Look at the cities that are there. Uh, Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Louis, again, you know, Cincinnati. These are all very ha- heavily Catholic cities, even to this day. And they were even more so back then. So maybe just things would be how- so screwed up if we had actually done that. No, <laughs> <laughs> I guess it'd be a lot easier to visit the Vatican. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, <really. laughs> there wouldn't be any walls. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> there would be a lot of bars. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> Would there still be a big arch? Oh. <laughs> oh, man. There'd be good barbecue, though. That's for sure. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, we all love that. Um, hey, let's hey. Um, let's take a quick break. Um, I should have uh, waited until I actually had this sound effect up. Uh, let's see. Let's bring in Alan Marchand, and uh, let's do Llewellyn's Leap instead of Punxsutawney Phil this time. Oh, a little bit loud. Sorry. Um and this is a moment for us to uh, thank everyone listening and watching uh, for contributing to the StarQuest Production Network. That is, if, if you are. If you're not, why not become a friend of SQPN and head over to sqpn.com slash... What is that m- noise in the background? <laughs> I'm here. Um, here um, a mouse? I don't know. But, um, anyway, uh, head over to sqpn.com and uh, check out... Uh, the way that you can help out the network in our effort for the new evangelization. And uh, you, you can become a friend of SQPN by as little as, uh, I think, $10 a month. You can, you can give less than that as well. And you know what? You're still our friends. <laughs> um, and one-time donations are also accepted. So I uh, just wanted to point you in that direction if you feel so compelled. And uh, an easier way to support the network is by shopping and buying really, really cool tech gadgets like I like to do from Amazon.com. If you uh, like to shop on Amazon and who doesn't, uh, you can help out our network and it's painless to you because you don't pay anything extra. Uh, it's just that Amazon doesn't get doesn't get quite as much as they would had you not used our affiliate link. And you can find those links over at sqpn.com slash Amazon. And I think if you just go into most of our pages, you'll see the uh, Amazon.com banner and the links there. So thank you very much for that, considering that anyway. And then finally, if you're out there and you're thinking, you know what, I want to start a blog, I want to start a, uh, a podcast, and I need some place to go for my web hosting, well, why don't you do as so many of the people, in fact, a couple of the people here on the panel are doing, and they went over to bluehost.com for their web hosting. Steve hosts his site and Maria hosts hers as well at bluehost.com, as well as our CEO, Father Roderick. Uh, His personal blog is hosted by Bluehost. And if you do, if you sign up with them with our affiliate link, they'll give us um, a a quite nice um, fee or whatever you want to call it uh, for, uh, for, for having signed up through that link. So please consider that as well. And yeah, that's about it. Anything else before we move on? I'm hearing no yays or nays. Nothing. So. Crickets. Whatever happened to our crickets? Um, we certainly haven't become any more engaging. No. Yet. The crickets. Let's see if I can find the, some crickets here. The crickets have been fumigated and, and sent away. Yeah. Um, I have so many darn sound boards and so many different applications and devices and everything else. All my sound effects are spread all over the place. And uh, so I'm looking here to see if I have any crickets on this one. Doing something. Oh, there, there you go. Miami oh, Rick has them all. I was yeah, going to say. I, I think I used all, them all. All, on your, 
<laughs> All your APG pals are here now. It's like, hi. <laughs> 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 Really? How did they find this? Huh. No, I'm just saying they're oh. all talking about rig. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, oh yeah, a couple of them uh, are are kind of uh, dual supporters of uh, the supporters. APG and also SQPN. So, hello, Mariana and uh, Stan. I see uh, at least two of those I recognize. And of course, Father Corey as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, thank you very yeah. much for uh, hanging out with us. Um, so, um, a prominent Supreme Court justice. Uh, who is or was is I should say not was is Catholic uh, just passed away last week and um, so I thought we could discuss that as well and the fact that it's going to pose um, well it already has posed quite a bit of uh, discussion in the political world uh, because you know we're here in the United States we're looking at an upcoming election and one of the one of the rights, duties, obligations of a president, an acting president, is to nominate somebody to take the place of a uh, Supreme Court justice who has left the job, as Scalia has. Mm -hmm. And so what do you think about all that? Well, I mean, that's just politics. I, I My big takeaway from the whole thing has really been um, Ginsburg and, and Scalia's relationship and how... Mm -hmm. They could be on such opposing political sides, um, ideology sides, and still have had this this wonderful uh, relationship. And I really, I think it just it speaks to what it means to be an adult in relationship, mm -hmm. <laughs> and how to be able to. Uh, I mean, I, I wish the whole nation, especially everyone up on the hill, could see that as an example of of what it means to. Yeah, to, to be human and to be in relationship. You can disagree. We, you know, we were talking in the last segment about both and mm -hmm. um, how, how they could be respectful, how they could be, you know, loving, you know, in that, in that filial, is it filial friendship, filial, mm -hmm. filial yeah, love I think so. that, um, that I, I just, it, it has moved me to, to see Ginsburg's response really. Yeah. I mean, it's a tough thing. Tough thing to do because when we're talking about such issues, we hold with such fervency, with such emotion. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, someone mentions, for example, the, you know, pro abortion, pro, you know, gay marriage, whatever it is. These are issues that on both sides are not just merely intellectual pursuits. They are truly something that reaches to the core of our being. And, sometimes it's hard for us to imagine how can I be friends with someone who disagrees with that? You know, how can I, how can I argue with someone and yet still, still go out with them for a beer? Mm -hmm. And, you know, one, one of the great examples of that I can think of in from literary history is GK Chesterton in Bernard, George Bernard Shaw. Hmm. They were absolutely opposed when it comes to religion, opposed to many things, but they'd still go out and go to the pub and have a good visit. You know, they were the best of friends. Mm -hmm. And have fantastic debates on the Oh, yes. The, on the oh, yes. Because well, it's usually they were both masters of the word. Exactly. I mean, they, <laughs> usually it's because you share something else that's very important, yeah. uh, important to you and you're passionate about. I just mm -hmm. formed two words there, important and passionate. Im 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 Portion. Can't even say yeah. I, I, I believe that the real I believe that the real word is impassioned. I'm just well, helping you a little bit. English there. teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but no. yes, uh, impassioned. You can't really have a friendship if there's not some civility there to begin with. You know, the exactly. ability to yeah. be able to Absolutely. talk to each other about things. Right. Right. I mean, in my own personal um world of the uh the aviation podcast that i do you know many of the probably most of the people that uh, listen to the show are even on my apg crew well about 50 percent of us are catholic and then the others are not and uh, and you know you could we still have discussions about faith and and uh the expression that you know i really do want to believe you know but so mm -hmm. but it's not like you oh, know, fox Mulder. pardon sorry X -Files. X Files reference. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't watch that show, so I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> um, but you know, it's because we share a passion uh, in aviation, and and so 
we have common ground there and we understand that we're different people and we have different beliefs uh, as when it comes to, you know, religion and spirituality. So, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, well, I can't be associated with you because you don't believe what I believe. You know, that's ridiculous. Exactly. That's not acting in a Christian way at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, uh, when you were talking about uh, Scalia and I tried to stay away from all of the political stuff, but, but I was, I really liked the stories of his humanity, you know, the way he mm -hmm. reached out to the poor, the way he reached out to his friends and things like that. I, I enjoyed those, yeah. those stories. And, you know, and I, I go ahead. Brother. I was going to say, I admit it, it made it kind of, he made it kind of fun to read some of the um, decisions of the Supreme Court, whether he was for or against, because he truly liked to throw in wit as much as he could. Mm -hmm. He very much would, you know, he, if he had something to say, he would be almost very witty about it. You know, it wasn't just, you know, bland law, law, legalese, you know, he, he would try to really bring some wit into it. And he, he, he had some, I can't remember any off the top of my head, but he had some pretty good one-liners he would throw into them. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, Father Corey and I um, both share uh, a passion uh, for technology. And uh, many people in the tech world are, you know, agnostic or atheists. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, one uh, who was raised a Catholic and uh, Father Corey and I like to listen to many of his shows, Leo Laporte, I was a little mm -hmm. distressed when, he learned of Scalia's death and some of the really not very nice things that he had to say about him is because, Sorry to hear that. yeah. And it was because I know why, because he, um, he has certain ideologies and certain opinions that were definitely, you know, 180 degrees out from what Scalia believed in and what mm -hmm. his ideologies were. And I'm thinking, but you know, he's, as we just mentioned, he's, he's a man and he uh, did many, many great things in his life. And he, w he seemed to be a very nice person. And, and you got to separate those two things, I think. So how do we return to that level of civility that, um, because I did, I saw on Twitter immediately some, some really very horrible, horrible things. things. Right. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the, the coming from the left, but in, in times when, when, when other folks have, have died, you know, the right is guilty as well mm -hmm. of, of oh, yeah. lack of civility. Oh, yes. Plenty it's of just endemic, power. you know, it, it's epidemic actually in, in our society, um, which is why I, I just go back to, to watching Ginsburg's response to it. But you know, one of the loveliest things I read this week was um, the, the little piece that one of his sons wrote. Um, I think it was in the Washington post. That was really just a lovely obituary, mm -hmm. a, a lovely recollection of his father. It was really very, very, neat to see it from his children's side too. I think his son is uh, the celebrant or yes, delivering the, at the yes, head he No, he is the actual celebrant. Um, it's going on right now as we're recording. I think mm -hmm. it just started. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, it, he's, that, that's pretty wild. Of course, he's, it's at the, uh, the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception, the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, DC, which is an amazing church. I love that church. Um, and yeah, so, I don't know what I would do if I was his son's position because he's really got the national exposure here to say the least. <laughs> mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's his father. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm sure they're going to have a, the, the burial itself will be private or, you know, something mm -hmm. like that. I'm sure there'll be something for the family themselves at that point. And actually I think the mass itself to actually be in there is only for family and friends. It's not. Well, can you imagine how, I mean, it's a big church, but that would be, that's going to be packed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I saw how beautiful the, the, the lining up of the, um, of the clerks of his past clerks mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. uh, during, I think they had a, a viewing yesterday. It was yesterday. Sure. Yes. And, right. Uh, and they were lined up beautifully. It was almost military. Sure. I know. And, you know, they have those big steps in the front of the Supreme court and they carried, you know, the casket up those steps. And you could tell that they were really struggling because, I mean, Scalia <laughs> was wasn't a small, small man. man. No, he, he was, was also a big guy. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a, you know, a wooden casket and everything. But you could tell it was there was a sort of devoted look on their face. It was like, we're going to do this no matter what. Yeah. 
you know. Yeah. And we're on TV, so we better make it look good. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, was, I appreciate those kind of things because it's sort of like a last uh, mm. a devotion to the man. You know, mm -hmm. it's like we're mm -hmm. going to do this. It's in, you know. I like those kind of that symbolism, those kind of symbolism. I guess it comes with being Catholic. You're all we're all about the symbolism, you know, the rituals, and that kind <laughs> the of thing. rituals. That's what yeah. I mean. And I think humans in general are creatures that like, you know, traditions and rituals, whether you're Catholic or not. All mm -hmm. right. Well, speaking of Catholic, this lady is Catholic. Miss Pat Gone, among women podcast. Among other things, the picks. the picks of the week. So, where shall we start? Square number one, two, three, or four? Except that they're all mixed I up. I know. So, <laughs> you'll just have to uh, <laughs> trust me when I say that square number three is Maria Johnson. Oh, boy. I'm ready to go, too. <laughs> Good. I have, I have an app that uh, is, has been around for some time, but has just very recently become relevant to me because did I tell you guys last week that I am close to being diabetic now? No. My blood sugar. Yeah. My blood sugar is out of control. So I'm on a diet and exercise regime established Good by my boy. doctor. And part of it requires that I track my uh, food intake so that I can, you know, watch, watch some patterns to see if we can nip this and nip this in the bud. Nip Don't it. you have that? Nip it. <laughs> nip it. Nip it. So I'm using... <laughs> Oh. I'm using my fitness pal. It's an app. Yeah. Um, it has a free, it has a free portion and then you can subscribe to it and it gives you a whole bunch of feedback on the nutritional value of what you're choosing. But what I like about it is that number one, it gives me a place to log my, my, my food and my exercise, but that it also lets me to select um, from a menu of restaurants so mm -hmm. it, it checks in with my uh, GPS components, you know, my, my searchability on the phone. And so I can go, like, I didn't have to not go to Longhorn. I, I went to Longhorn with John in the middle of the week for a, a, a dinner. And I just selected the menu items from here and it logged my calories. Mm -hmm. So I knew what I was doing and I knew what the breakdown is, carbs and protein and, mm -hmm. and, um, I don't know what the third thing is. Carbs, protein, whatever. Fat. fat. Yes, fat. <laughs> <laughs> and and, uh, and it gives I'm me fat? a running count. Well, there's that too. <laughs> but <laughs> does this app make me look fat? <laughs> so now, if, if you're, ideally, you know, you're this, this this app, ideally, it's going to make me look thin. Yeah. So now if you're walking into McDonald's, does it say, you know, you might actually have better luck if you go to the salad place next door? <laughs> hey, they have salads at McDonald's. It does. It does give you local restaurant choices. But it, <laughs> nice. it also, because it's on my phone, it's also tracking my steps. And, uh, Very good. and so it's a, it's a nice, it's neat. It's called My Fitness Pal. And it's a community app. Only I turned off all those things because I don't want the entire world to know what I'm eating and when. Yeah. But <laughs> that's what Instagram's for, <laughs> right? <laughs> but my fitness app—it's free, and and it does have you know the the option to upgrade to the premium. Excellent. Um, my uh, oldest daughter Alyssa uh, is using that as well, and she said, "Dad, you should use that too." And I said, "Are you saying I'm fat?" Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, a lot of, I know a lot of people that, uh, love the app and, uh, that's a great pick. <laughs> and, and speaking of apps, I might as well just kind of keep going here with uh, that, uh, great article, uh, from the Catholic news agency and six Catholic apps you need for Lent. Uh, they have, uh, six choices here. The, uh, Catholic relief services, rice bowl app, Lent sanity, which was my pick last week. Uh, La Date, which happens to be one that we have talked about and has been a pick of ours in the past, as well as I Breviary, uh, that's there as well. And finally, Mass Times. Many, in fact, almost every single one of these, except for maybe the uh, Rice Bowl app, have been apps that have been chosen as picks of the week on the Catholic Weekend show. And the MassTimes.org, the Mass Times uh, app, is is really um, nice for those of us who do a lot of traveling. And since I'm an airline pilot, I do a lot of traveling. Luckily, uh, most of the time I'm home on the weekend, so I don't have to really worry about, you know, how to find a, a mass to go to. But it's still handy during the week as well. And uh, so anyway, I'll have a link to the 
uh, six Catholic apps you need for Lent. And then also um, my secondary pick was one that I had just or had talked about at the beginning of the show. And that was uh, Jimmy Aiken, who is a, a great friend of the StarQuest Production Network. We love him so much. And uh, he's such a knowledgeable guy. And uh, that article regarding uh, Pope Francis speaking on hot button issues, jimmyaiken.com. And Mike, I'll give you the uh, link to that in the, uh, in the show notes. Who's next? I can go next. Well, um, mine is going to be probably not one that Maria should do, but everybody always enjoys during Lent, and that is the Knights of Columbus fish fries. <laughs> <laughs> we just had our first one last night, and of course, it was absolutely excellent. Um, the guys here always do a wonderful job on it. But of course, the fish is deep fried, and there's cheesy potatoes and cheesy beans, and you know. It's all good for the taste buds, but it's not good for the waistline. <laughs> <laughs> now, a lot of places are doing grilled fish as well yeah. as fried. Mm. Ours, ours actually has that option. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea, actually. That's a very good idea. But, <laughs> oh, you can't beat that deep fried. Actually, uh, letting out a little secret here, um, they ordered a, a pack of catfish as well as the regular Pollock fish that they use for Deep fried catfish. Oh, so good. Maria doesn't really? doesn't like. I, I love like it. Know, it, so, I just, it just tastes like mud in my head. Maria, uh, you know what? I've I've eaten um, catfish a lot lately. The farm raised catfish does not have that muddy taste. Really? Yes. Yeah. Well, the That's stuff right. they had last night was excellent. It's probably not as good for. But that you. was that was for the workers. Probably you know, that wasn't uh, the general distribution fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little place in the uh, Atlanta airport, uh, Pascal's. That uh, has good southern really? soul food and that kind of thing, and and uh, they usually have fish. And for the longest time, I was eating the fish, and uh, finally, I heard somebody say, "I'll have the catfish," and I'm going, "That's catfish." You've, you've been eating catfish I've been the whole eating time. Eating catfish for years and didn't even know I it was catfish. avoid it like the plague. I know that's what I mean. So I, I had <laughs> if I had tasted that muddy flavor in it, I I wouldn't have ordered it. I mean, now, I now admittedly, it. catfish is one of those things you got to know how to prepare yeah. too, though. They know uh, how to do it. I yes, like Steve. the breaded fried catfish with oh, Tabasco oh. sauce on it. That's what the that's what well, this that's is. That's the way to eat so, it. Yeah, we all love that. <laughs> broiled, broiled is good, but yeah, yeah. So, um, well, yeah, fish fries slash fish grills uh, <laughs> on Fridays. Yeah, just, oh, by the promoting, way, promoting, promoting the Knights of Columbus, of course. The Knights of the Columbus. Knights, yes, the Knights. They're great people, and uh, just so that uh, people that are watching this blab uh, who may not understand why Catholics eat fish on Fridays. I just wanted to make sure that you understand that we don't have to eat fish on Fridays. It's just that we're not allowed to eat meat on Correct. Friday. So we, we uh, sacrifice meat on Fridays during Lent. Right. And sometimes it's it a out. fine line between like not eating meat and that, that being a sacrifice and not going overboard. And really, especially if you love fish, that's really not much of a sacrifice. So uh, as la last night was an example, usually uh, when Linda fixes something, it's just very su something very simple like just rice and beans, you know. Just mm -hmm. uh, so we're getting nutrition and you know protein and that kind of stuff, but it's you know it's it's we're missing our meat, <laughs> and that's the whole right. point of it. Yeah, when I was growing up, we didn't eat meat on any Friday, whether it was Lent or not. But that was pancake night. Oh, my dad ooh, would make darn. pancakes, and so I, I still think of pancakes <laughs> as dinner food, not breakfast. Friday food. night. You better not have been enjoying Friday that. Pancakes. Better <laughs> not have been enjoying, enjoying that. Steve, uh, speaking yes. of enjoying, we're going to enjoy yes. your pick. Of the week. Oh, oh, that's right. Uh, I think I might go back to the apps theme that we had going a little while ago. Because, okay. like you, Jeff, I travel a lot. Not as much as you do, but but you do I, travel you know, a lot. I, I think all of us do. Um, maybe Father Corey the least amount of us all. I just drive a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I'm sorry. I think I'm a, a big fan of the TripIt app mm. because it will, what, what I like about it is it scans my email. And whenever I get like a confirmation from the airline or from the car rental or the hotel, it notices that and it builds a profile for me so I can go to one place and see all of my reservations in one place. And it'll add them to my calendar for me too. And, that is, uh, that is. A, yes. I was going to say, I keep interrupting. I'm sorry. Uh, that, so excited. Because I'm excited because it's so cool. Because all of a sudden you look at your calendar and you go, how did that get there? Yeah. My car yeah. reservations there, my hotel reservations there. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah I find Big it very, brother very is watching you. Yes. Yes, he is. Well, you know, Google now will do that too, where 
it'll come up on you know my little yeah. Google phone here, you know my Android phone here, and it's it it is a little disturbing when it does that. It's like how do you know that? Oh yeah, I've got an email that's attached to this account that you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I find it very helpful, even though I still use the airline apps a lot of the time, too, when I'm because of, you know, they seem to be quicker up quicker on the take when it comes to gate changes and things like that. So mm -hmm. I use all the travel apps now. You're a seasoned traveler, you. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, I'm, I've got a big trip coming up in a couple of weeks and I'm bound to determine it's a two week trip and I'm bound to determine to only take a carry on. Yeah, you can do See. it. You can do it. You just got to yeah. wear the same thing every day. <laughs> <laughs> or do like uh, Father um, Father Roderick does. You know, he just, uh, you know, takes stuff that's all black. It goes with everything. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Father Corey is thinking something to say. But uh, isn't that true? No, I mean, it I'm makes it easier myself. for you guys, right? You know, well, that's when I went over to the Holy Land uh, in seminary. You know, we were there for two and a half months. And I only packed like three over shirts but i had a whole bunch of you know the white under shirts mm -hmm. you know because you change those every day and those those you roll Hopefully. up into a little ball you don't care what they look like but then the over shirt you know you can fold a little bit nicer mm -hmm. that helps a lot it's so easy to be a man <laughs> <laughs> how would you not know? care what you look like <laughs> <laughs> yeah and especially easy to be a priest with just the black shirt <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's amazing what uh, Father Roderick travels with. Like nothing. <laughs> nothing. Like, <laughs> I'm angry. I mean, like nothing. You go, really? That's it? Yeah, that's yeah. it. Okay. Uh, okay. He can put everything underneath the seat in front of him if you if he that's needed to. It. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, um, it's time for us to end the show. Thanks again, everyone, everyone, for joining us on this blab, especially those of who have never, ever heard of the StarQuest Production Network or Catholic Weekend. I mean, it, it's special to us to... Uh, have you out there and uh, being part of our, our experience. And uh, again, if you want to learn more, you know, this is, you know, just one of the many awesome shows in, in our lineup at the StarQuest Production Network. You should check out, especially Father's shows. Um, let's see, The Secrets of, are we still doing The Secrets of um, Doctor Who? It's on hiatus right now because Doctor Who is between seasons. Oh, okay. And they have The, the Secrets of Star Wars. I think that they just put out a Recent yep. episode, Dom and Father talk about the latest uh, in the series of great movies. Yeah, and... that looks to be a three-part uh, a three part production, I think. Oh, right? okay. I haven't listened to it yet, yeah. so uh, okay. I wasn't aware of that. Um, let's see. We, so there are a lot of great stuff. The Break and The Walk are two that uh, Father does every week. Uh, so check it out uh, at sqpn.com. And, and, re and remind our regulars and, and new viewers that this is transitioning. This is, in fact, this is a this is a big transition. I'm not sure if you're going to see all of us again here next week or just a couple of us. You know, we're kind of really not absolutely positive uh, how soon this big transition is going to uh, occur. But we are in the midst of rebranding at SQPN, and we are in the midst of uh, you know adjusting our schedules and our shows. And this is going to turn into. Uh, it's always been a community show, and it will continue to be a community show, and it will be a way for us to uh, connect with uh, those of you who are supporters of the StarQuest Production Network or whatever the new branding is going to be, and uh, for you to uh, find out about what is going on behind the scenes, etc. So look for that transition to occur very, very soon, and uh, we're all just playing it by ear, actually, so we'll, we'll mm -hmm. see. Maybe we'll all be back again next week, perhaps, maybe not, so... Um, that's not good. That's not very good promotion, Jeff. That's terrible marketing. Really? I don't know. I but love you all. We love you, Maria. And uh, thank you, Adios. everyone, for uh, being with us. And until next time, enjoy your week. Have a great Catholic weekend. Take care and God bless. And I forgot to mention all of our places and how we can follow. And <laughs> it's in the show notes. Yeah. You can you can go to the show notes. All stuff. All right. yep. Okay, there we go. So that's the end of the audio show, but we're still on live on Blab. Yep. And so now we can pay a little bit more attention to what's going on in the chat, unless, of course, you panelists need to go and then feel free to uh, to leave if you'd like. Um, I'll say hello to a few people. Yeah, Stan, so you like uh, Blab? You know, a lot of the people uh, uh, at the APG love Blab as well. I think 
uh, just the way they've set this up with the interaction with the chat room on the side and the ability to ask questions and that kind of thing and give props, which sometimes can be distracting. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's kind of a fun interface. What do you uh, co-hosts think about it? I think it I works loved, pretty well. I loved seeing everything on the screen. So because yeah. sometimes I feel like I'm always down here mm -hmm. trying to catch up with what's going on. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I like to be, it's on mm -hmm. my right here. So how I can, many, how many can you have at one time? Do you know? Just four squares. Hmm. We've maxed it out. So uh, there have been at, uh, times uh, with my show where I've, I've been together with another host. And so we were able to add a, a, a fifth person to mm -hmm. the uh, show. But that doesn't happen very often. So you're, that's one of the limitations of it. And uh, I think they, they make a very good argument that uh, for a panel talk show, having more than four can be kind of cumbersome and people talking yeah. over each other and that kind of thing. And they're, they're well, right about that, but it's still nice to be able to have the, I was going to say, I mean, we, when we use hangouts, we only have four or five of us, so it's not so much of a problem, mm -hmm. but have you ever seen one where they've had like eight or nine or 10, you know, max of for hangouts that gets to be a mess. Yeah. yeah we've done a few shows like that where we had a bunch of people in it. It is too much. And if you can't see everybody's face, like this is easier to not over talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. It is nice to have everybody in full, you know, full view. Um, I like I like the the question panel, or mm -hmm. which I think is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. So um, and then so what we've decided at uh, uh, my own the airline podcast is that uh, when there is a a reason to have more than four participants, that we we can always use Google Hangouts because we can um, post whether we're using Blab or the Google Hangouts um, video on the YouTube channel. So it's uh, kind of, I think we're, you know, we're going to mostly use Blab, but occasionally we'll use Google Hangouts. So. Um, is this always public? I mean, you, you not do private. Right. Yeah. You can't, uh, you can't make them private. As far as I know, I'm not a Blab expert for sure. Um, Salah, um, this is the first time that we've aired this show on Blab, um, but I've been using blab with the uh, uh airline pilot guy show that i do for i don't know a couple months i think we've been using blab and uh most of the folks that have expressed their opinion about it have uh overwhelmingly uh said they prefer that over the uh the google mm -hmm. hangout on air option and i saw one of the comments that uh it airs nicely on the iphone it so does. i guess you can watch it on your devices mm -hmm. and it's convenient right right you can do the same thing with Hangouts on Air on your mobile devices as well. But I, I, for, I don't know what exactly it is, but it just seems like uh, this is just more interactive and it makes people happier. <laughs> so uh, for those of you who work for Blab in the uh, chat room right now, you know, whatever you're doing, you know, it's, it's, it's great. Uh, the only thing I would, the thing I'd really love the ability to do would be to get on, like have my co-hosts on uh, before we actually put out the live feed. Mm -hmm. Because that mm -hmm. some, that's nice because we we did that with Google Hangouts on air because we can talk about what we're going to talk about in the show a little bit of pre planning and sometimes even post show uh, discussion, which as far as I know we can't do yet on Blab and I, I don't know if that's something that they're considering uh, changing or adding or whatever but uh, I would love that feature and mm -hmm. uh, that's really the only thing that I'd mm -hmm. say about that. Uh, they also make it very easy to. Uh, to share, like put out tweets in the midst of the show, you can hit a button that says like over here, share the last 30 minutes or 30 seconds. And then you can put something and you can send out that tweet. Um, it's uh, yeah, very, very uh, keen interaction, I think. Excellent. Excellent. So. Well, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll probably be, I'll probably be transitioning out of the, the regular lineup so sooner rather than later. All right. um, I'm going to make it easier on you, Maria. You're fired. Fire me. <laughs> Being inspired by Trump. You're fired. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'll probably be around next week and then um, and then see, because uh, for those of you who are still in the chat, you know, I'm, we're moving. And um, and my retirement is uh, going to be bringing some new uh, new adventures and new opportunities for me. So I'm and challenges. Very much looking. At, and what? Challenges. And challenges. Yeah. yeah. We're going to have some big challenges coming up. So uh, always asking for prayers. 
um, yeah, so that'll, you know, I definitely will be back next week. And then after that, we'll see where, you know, maybe y'all will call me back six months from now or a year from now just to check in on where I'm at. <laughs> okay. As, as you'll, you'll uh, call in from the, from the beach there, you know, <laughs> with your floppy hat on. Life. <laughs> yeah. She's moving to a beautiful place on the oh, yes. day. That's nice. Yeah. It's going to be nice. Yeah. yeah. All right. Very good. Steve, you have uh, some travel this week? No, I'm actually here for another week. And then okay. I'm off to California. Where California? I, get, I know. And I get to have a, a play day with Lisa Hendy. Oh, boy. You lucky guy. We're going to go like, to wineries or farmer's markets or something. So I'm looking forward to that. Nice. Oh, that Lisa. Mm -hmm. That Lisa. <laughs> I sent her a tweet uh, from the church that uh, she used to, uh, she knew the priest and she's talked about it for so many years, a, a little uh, a Catholic church in Seal Beach. And uh, when I was out there last, I uh, went to mass there at, uh, I can't remember the name of the church now, but anyway, um, great, great little uh, old church right there on Pacific Coast Highway in Seal Beach. And uh, so I tweeted her and said, guess where I just attended mass? <laughs> <laughs> So we love Lisa. Um, and she went, wow. She yeah. just got back from a heck of an adventure in the she she came back from Colombia, turned around and went to the Philippines. I know. Wow. Talking about I told her I was coming to California. I really didn't think she was gonna be available. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, that was available for anything you put in her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she can't say no. Oh. Anyway. Well, we uh, we love her. We love all of you uh, panelists, and we love all of you in the chat room and all of you uh, out there um, in the world because God told us we have to love you. <laughs> we don't have to like you, though. No, that's true. That's what my wife always says. That's my thought. Too. I love you. I don't like you, but I love you because God told me so. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Makes me warm. <laughs> anyway, with that... I think we'll uh, shut this thing down. So uh, until we see you again, have a great weekend and a great week. See y'all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And you know what? When I when I turn this off, all of us are going to be gone. <laughs> Boom. So. Turn it off so I can watch the whole thing just go blah. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to hit pause recording first. Bye. We're back, Jeff. <laughs> we never left. This is what you happens gave us when you give us all the hosting rights. <laughs> So I guess we have to go. All right. So goodbye for real. Bye. Yeah. Bye, -bye. <laughs>